Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we are going to compare a couple different ways to remove rust and old paint and buildup off of this old antique hay wagon. First thing we're going to try is this twisted wire wheel. I've got a couple other attachments that can go on this grinder, and then we've got a Harbor Freight sandblaster. Cheap, portable sandblasting unit. We're going to time it and see you know, how much we accomplish and how much time, how good of a job it does. And then I probably will have a follow-up with a couple of other methods that I've been suggested in the comments. So, no long monologue here. We're just going to jump into it and get started. Sometimes I get in trouble for not having my PPE. This is uh, removing this off here, especially with the sandblaster, but really any of it, there's nothing to play around with. So that was a pretty quick little test there. That was five minutes. And in five minutes, well, in three minutes, I took 90% of everything off of this. And it was moving pretty quick across here. But there are levels to what you call finished on this. So this is all the way to bare metal. Even though it's still not smooth, this is probably as far as I would go. So this hay wagon is big. I have a lot of area to cover. And you can see we're already starting to tear up this, this wheel. And feels pretty good if I want to take that top layer off and call this done. Feels like a pretty good first test. Now, if I'm trying to go to this silver, getting all of this black layer off, that would be a much longer grind. And I don't... I think these are going to hold up that well. Let's try something else. This is labeled as a paint remover. I have a feeling this thing is not going to hold up. It's going to shred this, but let's just find out. All right, that took two minutes and did more than twice the area that the other tool did. And it's eating it off. I don't know, that might have taken half of the life off of this. I almost could have measured it before. Now, this also did not go all the way to shiny metal. But this is smoother and this is rough where that wire 
put scratches in it. Let's look at that. So right here, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but these are scratches from the, the wire wheel, and you can feel it right there that it's rough. Not as much over here, but definitely where it went down to bare metal. This feels pretty smooth. We are 90% paint removed. That's ready for paint right there. Pretty sure anyone watching has figured this out by now, but this is not the ultimate controlled experiment. Just a regular guy who wants to sand this hay wagon. And I want to find out for the viewer who maybe also hasn't done this or isn't going to do this professionally, is it worth it to buy this sandblaster? So first, I'm going to see if the sandblaster will take all of this off and what it does to what was left. Then we're going to put it on some new metal that's in the same condition and see how it does. And just real quickly, if you didn't see my last video on this, this is Central Machinery 20 pound sandblaster. $80 at Harbor Freight today. Bought like another $50 of blasting media. Pretty simple setup. The thing is, I think it may be too slow to be practical for what I'm doing, but after I'm done, we'll talk about if I see any other obvious uses for it. I'm not going to be able to explain this as I go because I'll have the mask on, but the way you operate this, you open this valve all the way, you open this valve all the way, and you open this valve on your nozzle all the way. And that gets air passing through it. Then on the bottom, you have a media control valve. You open that until it's getting the right amount of sand to do the job you're trying to do. So let's get it going. All right, once again with the caveat, this isn't meant to be expert opinion. It's just some guy. And if you're wanting to do something like this and wanting to buy that tank, these are my thoughts on it. This sandblaster will take it all the way to bare metal like nothing else I have here, short of an actual grinding wheel, which is obviously actually just removing the metal. So for quality of removal and how smooth and fine you can get it, Sandblaster wins. But overall, I wouldn't buy it again for this job. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, it's the slowest. Number two, it's the most expensive. Number three, ongoing cost will be the most expensive because I've already used about 15 pounds of blasting media at a dollar a pound. I've already used $15 worth of blasting media to do one little spot on this bar on the front of the wagon and what you just saw me do here. Now that blasting media is still on the floor. I can sweep it and sift it and reuse it. You're not gonna reuse all of it and it's each time you reuse it, it's slightly lower quality depending on the type of media it can actually break down or soften. You're gonna have your rust chips in it depending on what you're doing. You can reuse it and I will reuse it. 
But for large area removal, I would rather do it with the grinder and a wire wheel or probably actually that rust removal wheel. And that's what I'm going to do most of this with. I think there could be some application like around these bolts and stuff or like where you saw me do these grease fittings where it's going to really get into the small spaces. But definitely not for me for large area, which probably common sense. I should have known that before I started, right? Now, if I had a bunch of small parts, would I buy that? No, because some people have said that in the comments. Be great for a bunch of small stuff. For a bunch of small stuff, I'm going to pay another $100 and I'm going to get a cabinet and contain all the media in it and just be a lot better because I've got media now all over my shop. And... I couldn't do this whole thing in here if I decided to. I'd have to take it outside, in which case I don't have a good way to collect my sand. Maybe right in front of the shop, I've got a little concrete pad. So, not an ideal tool for me. I probably won't use it a whole lot, but maybe certain applications. Now, here's the part where I ask for your thoughts. How far down should I take this? I kind of think what I'm leaning to right now is that the first result I got when it took off all the rust, but you still got, you're not gray, you're not down to bare metal, but you've still got this under layer. The, I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. So let me know what you think. The next thing I've got to do is decide best way to apply the paint. I'm going to try to think about the cost of rattle cans versus buying an air sprayer versus an electric sprayer I have, versus painting it on with brushes. This is going to be painted John Deere green. Give me your advice. I've got a nice air compressor. I think I'm leaning towards buying a gallon of John Deere Classic Green and a cheap air sprayer. So let me know what you think. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.